Hello, welcome to this video. Today we're going to look at this special integral. So we have the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative t times sine t divided by t dt. Now it might look, it might not look special, but uh, it's going to be really hard if we don't use a, a certain trick for, an, uh, for very specific integrals we're going to run into some problems. But here, we can use Feynman's trick, which essentially uh, turns this into another function, <clears throat> and then we take the derivative of that, of that function and hope that it simplifies out so we can integrate it back again, and we get a simple answer. Uh, so, uh, I'll not try to explain further. Let's uh, let's just st uh, start solving this, and uh, you'll see uh, how can we use Feynman's trick. It's really hard to spot, <laughs> but um, so first of all, we have to turn this into some uh, function. So let's make this i uh, for integral. Of, let's use the variable s. Now, we want it, it to simplify when we take the derivative. So, uh, maybe we'll get rid of the t in the denominator, which means when we do take the derivative, we'll have to multiply by something times t for this to cancel out. So, maybe we, uh, we put uh, the the s here in the exponent e to the negative st because then when we take the derivative with respect to s everything will stay the same except we multiply by negative t inside the integral and it will cancel so that's exact exactly what we're going to do so we're going to define this i of s as the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative s times t and then the rest is the same times sine t divided by t dt. And it's going to be important later on, we're going to uh, let this, only, we're going to define this such as s is bigger than 0. Otherwise, we're going to run into some problems later on. And it does, and we can say that. We can define our function however we want. And it won't be a problem because to get this original integral we just have to plug in s equal that's equal to one and the last time I checked one is bigger than zero so this is fine to do um, now let's actually use Feynman's trick and actually take the derivative of this with respect to s so it's i prime of s it's equal to what well, t here is just another parameter. Uh, the integral is with respect to t, but the derivative is with respect to s. So what we're actually doing is, if we ignore this integral and dt and that stuff, because it's just related to t, we have on the inside e to the negative st times uh, this, which is just with t, times sine t divided by t. Meaning that, in order to take the derivative, we take... <laughs> The derivative of e to the negative st, ta uh, the derivative of e to the negative st with respect to s, and then we just multiply that by the parameter sine t divided by t, and then take the integral from zero to infinity with respect to t. So, this is a, the integral from zero to infinity. Now, the derivative with respect to s of e to the negative st is negative t times e to the negative st, which is what we wanted in order to cancel out this t. So we have negative t times e to the negative st, and the rest stays the same, times sine t divided by t dt. Now, these t's will cancel out. We're going to take this negative sign outside of the integral, or we're going to be left with the integral negative the integral from 0 to infinity 
of e to the negative st sine t. This is dt. Now, what did we actually do here? Because now we need to evaluate this integral. And it, it doesn't look very simple. And for this, and the finding the solution to this is quite tricky. But what we can say is, well, we're going to have to use complex numbers. But, let's see. Using uh, Euler's identity or fo uh, formula, however, however you want to state it, e to the i theta is, uh, is cosine theta plus i sine theta. So we can say that the imaginary part of e to the i theta is just sine theta. And because we have this sine t here and this and this e, and this is the only thing it's multiplied by is e to the something, it it could be useful to use this. So instead of theta here, we just have t and what we are going to have is this. We're going to have negative the imaginary part of the integral from 0 to infinity and e to the negative st times e to the it. Because remember, Theta was just replaced by t. Then this is dt, and we close the brackets. Now we can combine these uh, exponents to get a negative of the imaginary of the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the i minus s, this times t dt. Now, let's see. We can take this i minus s as just another parameter, like we did when taking the derivative with respect to s. And we can say that this is just e to uh, something like e to the a times t. So the integral of this would be the same thing, just divided uh, by this that's in front of the t, divided by this a, which would give us just the same thing, divided by i minus s. And then we take that from, from 0 to infinity. Meaning that what we're going to be left with here is negative the imaginary part of we have e to the i minus s times t divided by i minus s. And that is from t equals 0 to infinity. Now first of all, let's take this negative to inside this and to ins inside this and just change this i minus s to s minus i. So we take away this negative. This turns to s minus i. Now, let's look <clears throat> And what happens when we plug in infinity? Well, what we get is uh, e to the i times infinity. I'm just going to leave it as t times e to the negative s times quote-unquote infinity. I don't want to anger anybody. Divided by s minus i. That's when it's infinity. You can see... The, this part, no matter how big t is, because of Euler's formula, this is cosine t plus i sine t. So, uh, the most is going to be is just, um, what, uh, the most is going to be is 1 plus i or 1 minus i or so, something like that. It's not <clears throat> just... The real units and the imaginary units of this are not going to get bigger than 1 and smaller than negative 1. So we can just say that this is 
and that this is times e to the negative s times infinity. Now we can use that the fact that we said s is bigger than zero, because that means that this approaches at the top negative infinity. e to the negative infinity is zero. And because this, the real part and the imaginary part, don't get absurdly large, that means we can just say this is that this times zero is zero. Divided by s minus i obviously stays zero. So when t approaches infinity, this approaches zero. So we can say so we can happily say when t so this is just zero when t approaches infinity. Now when t approaches zero, uh, it's very simple. Well, let me just the it's the imaginary part. So we have a zero and minus when plug in zero at the exponent. <coughs> It's just going to be e to the 0, and that's 1, and, and the bottom is going to stay the same, so it's minus 0 minus 1 divided by s minus i, and the, the imaginary part of that. Now, um, let me take this negative out of the imaginary, so now we have negative the imaginary of 1 divided by s minus i. Now, how do we find this? Well, we're going to use a, a very simple, uh, uh, so we're going to use something, a very simple trick, you say, multiplying by s plus i on the top and bottom of, the, of this. Why? Because by difference of squares, s plus i times s minus i is s squared minus i squared. <coughs> which is s squared plus 1. In the top we have uh, s plus i divided by this. And because we have no uh, imaginary uh, stuff, only a real number at, uh, at the denominator, that means that we will be able to easily take the uh, imaginary part of this. So, uh, let's just do that. Multiply by s plus i on the top and bottom of this fraction. And, uh, like I said earlier, we get negative the imaginary of s plus i divided by s squared plus 1. Now, this is real. So the imaginary part is just the imaginary part of the top divided by this. The imaginary part of the top is 1 because we have only plus s plus 1 times i, and that's divided by s squared plus 1, meaning that this is negative 1 divided by s squared plus 1. And that, after all this work, we get that that is the derivative of our original function, which means that we can now take the integral of this with respect to s, and if you remember, this is the derivative with respect to s of the inverse tangent of s. And so, i, i of s is just uh, negative the inverse tangent of s. And then, because we're taking the integral, we're going to have to add another c as a constant. Okay. But this uh, c is still bothering us. What can we do about it? Well, s is just bigger than zero. We have no limit on how big s is going to be. So we can let s approach infinity plus infinity. And what's going to be our va uh, the value of this? Well, if we plug it into here, uh, because t <clears throat> is on the interval from 0 to infinity, it's positive all the way. Meaning that when we multiply <clears throat> the negative of t by something that approaches infinity, like we have in this exponent, that's going to approach negative infinity. e to the negative infinity, that's, that approaches 0. And then 0 times anything here is going to be 0 meaning that this is going to be the integral of 0, which will be 0. So, so when s approaches infinity, i of s 
is zero. But on the other hand, we can plug it into here and see that this is C minus the inverse tangent of quote-unquote infinity. It's not the proper way to write this. I need to write the limit as S versus infinity of inverse tangent of S, but I won't bother because I, everyone knows what I mean by this. The inverse tangent of infinity is, well, pi over 2. <clears throat> Taking the tangent of pi over 2, the closer and closer you get to pi over 2, the closer the, uh, the tangent of it will get to infinity. So the inverse tangent of it, of infinity, will be pi over 2. So get c minus pi over 2. Now, uh, and we just add pi over 2 to both sides, and we get that c is pi over 2. So now we have a formula for i of s, and we just plug in pi over 2. We get that i of s is pi over 2 minus the inverse tangent of s which is very simple. Now we can just plug in s is equal to 1 to get to our original integral and the inverse tangent of 1 is pi over 4 pi over 2 minus pi over 4 is pi over 4 so finally we can say that this integral equals pi over 4 and finally that's it if you want more content like this, please subscribe to my channel. I'll be uploading more interesting problems like this in the future. And finally, that's it.